What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Jimmy Smith, Ryan Moody, our May show. A little bit off the cuff. Jimmy doesn't know I'm doing this. However, I went through uh, some issues medically with my mom. I know Jimmy's went through his trials uh, this past year. Uh, if you aren't aware, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's father passed away earlier today, uh, as well as Ken Shamrock's father uh, recently went into hospice care. For those who don't know, I'm close to Ken, so I wish everybody all the best. But with that being said, you're probably on a mobile device right now, whether it's a tablet or your phone. I would recommend, Jimmy, I'm sure won't mind either, if you guys want to hit the pause button for just a moment, reach out to a family member, tell them you love them, because you never really know where things are going to go. However, tough transition, but we will transition, right, Jimmy, into Cowboy and Connor. The press conference went down today, and I got to say, I was, I guess it was a little bit wrong. We had kind of played this off, right? Like, this was just not a big fight card and not a lot of excitement. But I got to say, when I look at the numbers of Embedded, when I look at the people that watch the press conference, and I look at the way the general public is receiving this fight, it is way bigger than we made it out to be. Here's my caveat. I do see this fight as big. I do believe Conor McGregor versus Cowboy Cerrone is big. My uh, statements about the card is this is pretty much the only fight of that night that is pay-per-view worthy. I stand by that 100%. It doesn't surprise me that people had interest in this press conference, that they want to hear from Conor McGregor and, and Cowboy Cerrone. That doesn't surprise me at all. I stand by my statements that I, I believe the card itself could have used a little more star power. That the, I thought they would have... Uh, you know, helped out Cowboy and 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 Connor with some bigger names, and that really ha hasn't happened. I think there's tremendous interest in this fight. I, I I believe that from the beginning. We didn't really learn a lot though during this press conference. I I do want to say, I think it was a little uncharacteristic the way the I guess whole thing was vetted. Uh, number one, I was really really surprised. They had any questions about Connor's legal issues. Uh, Dana did not immediately defer them. However, the gentleman that asked the question was just booed like crazy. Uh, you also have, you know, the schmo who's became, uh, for better or worse, uh, more endeared to MMA media. And then at the end, we closed out with Chad Johnson asking a question, which seemed extremely staged because basically Dana had said, uh, OK, it's over. And then said, oh, one more. And there's Chad Johnson who stumbles through a question for, uh, I believe he was Bleacher Report. Very, very odd that they kind of mix those things into this. Yeah, the, the reaction of the crowd, Dana White and Donald Cerrone, strangely enough, to the sexual assault question, I, I found that really distasteful. I mean, the, the, the reporter who asked it, I don't know who did, uh, we mentioned it, but I, I, if you don't know, I've been on air for six hours today. My brain is not working very well, but, uh, for Sirius XM, cause I did Luke Thomas show and then I did the press conference show on MMA tonight. So anyway, um, the, the issue to me is the reporter who asked the question asked it in a professional way. It wasn't a disrespectful question. He didn't go after Conor McGregor in any way. It was a completely legitimate question, and the crowd booed him. Donald Cerrone asked, oh, why are you going to ask that question, kind of defending Connor from the reporter, and then Dana White jumps in and says he already answered that. Just allow him to ask the question. We know Connor McGregor is going to say some pat standard, look, I can't comment on that, I'll get my day in court, whatever. Whatever. Like We don't expect a confession, but allow the question to be asked and answered, and we can all move past it. And the fact that it was reacted to so in such a hostile manner, that's the really telling thing. Not anything that was asked or said or anything like that, but the reaction to it, uh, I didn't like that at all. To your point, if that had happened, if he had just asked it and Connor said, hey, listen, you know, unfortunately, pending litigation, I have to defer this question, but I appreciate, you know, your interest in it. You and I would not be talking about this. The fact Dundee. that it was, yeah, Dundee. yeah, it got made into something bigger than it was. And to to that point, I was really shocked when they brought up Connor boxing again that it didn't have the same negative turn. We like, listen, in a way, we just got him back, right? 
as, as MMA fans. Do we really want him going off and, and doing another tangent again for 15 months? No, there's some concern that he's even going to be able to fight with all the legal issues. So the fact that, and this was actually brought up initially when John had asked questions, th there was really just a very uh, anxious feeling, I think, in the crowd, and they were very reactionary, more so than, than any press conference I think I've ever watched in the past. Yeah, it was... It was strange on a lot of different levels. The way the fighters treated each other, uh, considering the past, and the way Conor McGregor has approached other fights, considering uh, Cowboy's general weakness when it comes to other fighters getting under his skin and trash-talking him and making a fight personal, that was a non-issue at this press conference. It was all love and respect, and we're going to go out there and put on a show, and it was very strange in that regard. It seemed like... You know, there were a lot of opportunities on both sides to get a psychological advantage and was passed up by both fighters. Now, that's that's fine. I would expect that from both guys in a sense because Conor McGregor, uh, you saw the Ariel Hawani interview. It's clear that he's taking a much more subdued approach to all the media leading up to this. All the press he's gotten over the past couple of years has been bad. He, this is kind of a rehabilitation PR tour. This the the media he's done up to this point. Yeah. So I, it didn't it didn't surprise me that much. And 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 Cowboy's just not that guy either, really. Um, but it it had the overall tone of of as kind of a, a weird press conference because even when it came to hyping the fight and saying, "Hey, I respect this guy, but I'm going to run through him." I'm gonna tear through them like tissue paper. All this, like you didn't, you didn't see a lot of that. It was, it was strange in that regard. Yeah, and you know what also really caught me off guard was that Connor was on time. I can't tell you the last time he was on time for a press conference. Crazy, huh? Yeah, that. I mean, this. <laughs> this is the guy who got caught cheating on his wife. So what happens? He does all the dishes, right? He's home straight from work, not going out with the boys on the weekend. This is a guy who realizes, to some degree that he's lucky to be doing this right now. He's lucky to be doing this. With all he has going on outside the octagon, this is kind of a refuge for him. He's finally back fighting. And, you know, he's trying to make the most of it and, and not make any more mistakes for the time being, where it will wear thin, will, where there will be issues, is if he blows Cowboy away, right? And that victory speech, and he's back, and... It's it's hard not to slide into your old habits once you get some more success. Once the taste of humble pie wears off a little bit. We'll see if it sticks around. Yeah, I was also really interested that no one brought up the fact, and he didn't voluntarily offer, that by his own account, it seems like he took other camps less professional. And whether that carried over to the press conferences or the media that we saw, it seems like at least... The excuses that were given for the last fight were, hey, I was drinking. I was in my own proper 12 element. And he did kind of play into that in the press conference a little bit. Nobody continued with it. But I thought it was very odd that this is something that just got offered earlier this week when we've had all this time, 15 months really, for him to kind of come out and address the loss to Khabib and how, I don't want to say uninspired, but unbalanced that loss was. And now all of a sudden, you know, we see him fighting someone much lower on the scale, no belts involved, a lot of things that really haven't been factors in Conor McGregor fights before. Most of the times he fights, it's a huge name. It's an international draw. It's a championship fight. And there's an expectation that it could be one of the greatest fights of all time, right? Like, that's the narrative. I don't think this fight misses, I, I rather, excuse me, I think this fight misses a lot of those marks simply because all those tangibles we're used to aren't there anymore. And that's not me being a Conor McGregor hater. That's just me being up front. I mean, me and Jimmy talked about this all fair a couple of days ago. I, I'm Irish. I should love this guy. I should have a Conor McGregor poster and drink proper 12 every night. But everything he's done has really kind of worn thin on me. Like, I'm I'm tired of the shtick in a way. I I think a lot of people are, and him changing it up is is a tacit admission that he might be aware of that. But, um, you know, w w one of the things you have to to really keep in mind for this one is because this isn't number one, because this isn't for a belt, because this isn't you know the number one name at 155 pounds. 
He's got to win. If you lose to number one, which he did last time, lost to Khabib, there's a fight below that. There's a contender fight, you know, after. It's a top five fight after that. If he loses to Cowboy Cerrone, who's lost two in a row, who isn't in a contender spot right now, who has certainly had his ups and downs at one foot five and 170, where does Connor go? And the one kind of attitude uh, and the one question that wasn't asked that I would have asked if I had been a report, reporter there, this fight's must win. Is that how Connor's approaching it? This, to me, is a must win fight. And it really hasn't been framed in that way by a lot of people. You can lose to the best in the business, and eh, it's not a big deal. You can lose to get outboxed by Floyd Mayweather, the greatest boxer of his generation. It's not, you know, it's not going to kill you. But Cowboy, as you said, out of that contender status, where does he go from here? Certainly not a big name pay per view seller, blah 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 blah, international killer. That that wouldn't be a possibility for his next fight after Cowboy. Should he lose? Well, I mean, I'll argue a little bit with you on that because, to be fair, they did mention uh, the Penny uh, Manny Pacquiao, and, and he really scoffed at that as if you know that wouldn't be a competitive fight. Who am I to fight Manny Pacquiao? All these things, and it's like, wait a second. In a way, you're kind of fighting like the Manny Pacquiao of UFC to a degree. Like Cowboy's not the youngest fighter. Cowboy's got a long record. Cowboy's well respected. Cowboy's lost to some of the best. Like where? Where do you kind of get off saying that? Like, who are you to dictate who you, you know, fight? And I guess I, we have to bring that full circle. The UFC has given him the ability to control way too much, in my opinion, what goes on. And now you're seeing maybe a situation where he realizes, hey, I've got to turn it back from 11 to 8. And, and we just, I think, maybe got 4 instead of 8. Yeah, that's what it feels like. If you know, I was expecting a subdued Conor McGregor. I really was, or a more contrite Conor McGregor, however you want to put it. I, I really was. This was like a love in. It was an absolute love fest. Hey, I respect you. I respect you too. Hey, let's go. You know, which to me favors Cowboy, a hundred percent. He loves that. He loves being buddies with whoever he's fighting. Um. So I think psychologically, any edge that Connor might have had going in, I, I, I think has evaporated. Now, tactically, he still has a lot of advantages. He might, it might be enough. But any psychological edge of maybe getting under Cowboy's skin and, and pushing those emotional buttons, uh, that disappeared today. Extremely passive, I think, would be the best way to describe how Connor was today. I want to bring up one final point because I, I've seen a couple people mention this, but I haven't really seen anyone high profile like yourself. I know you don't watch the embeddeds, but it's relatively. I'm high clear. profile. Yeah, you're high profile. Wow, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I mean, you're not the schmo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not the schmo. I am not the schmo. Thank God, because I wouldn't be here. But anyway, <laughs> there. Uh, and nor, nor would half the listeners. But I digress. No, I did. I didn't know who that was until uh, I was in Vegas for the the last Pacquiao fight, Pacquiao Thurman. And someone said, hey, you know, the schmo is there. And I went, who's the schmo? I was like, who is that person? I'm like, oh, he gives interviews. I've seen him since then, and I saw him there. He's a nice enough guy. But, yeah, that's why I had no idea who they were talking about at the time. It's an adorable concept. I'll give him that. He gets an A-plus for creativity. It's just I don't know how viable that's going to always be for him. But if you watch the second Embedded, it is relatively clear to even the untrained eye cowboy has a limp and and i don't know if it's just from something that happened that day or if this is an ongoing issue but i looked tonight you know he was uh in, in a very uh i guess really dark attire it was very hard to tell the stage i don't know if the stage was lit poorly or, or he just wore his hat down the whole time to give uh you know some tombstone vibe like who knows but uh, i i was a little bit concerned with that limp that he had earlier in the week you, you think that factors into it at all or no it might be. It might be. Now, bear in mind, I, I, I was on radio the whole time. I wasn't able to see any of it. I just heard uh, the press conference. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's a terrible sign. And when it comes to injuries right before fights, you're never going to get the straight truth anyway. Never. So who knows? I mean, of course, he's going to say everything's fine. Fighters always say everything's fine. But yeah, I, I've, I've seen a lot of people mention that limp, and, and it's certainly disconcerting. 
Well, these are two guys that aren't going to leave a fight early. I mean, there's no way that they're there. It's going to happen. You you can drag either one of them to the cage for this fight. Uh, and I guess as a closing out point, since it was mentioned, uh, there was some talk about uh, the Khabib Tony Ferguson fight. And if Connor would be on standby, if one of them went out, and boy, I immediately thought to myself, you don't want any of that, and he fell right into that, I'll, I'm always ready. Do you feel like, and I'm just going to set this up, we're going to break the fight down later, but just right now, if this is a loss for Connor McGregor, let's say, and I'll just, as a spoiler, I don't think it's going to happen, I don't think you think it's going to happen, but if it does happen, and something happens to the most jinxed fight in the history of fighting, is it fair that Connor gets put in against Tony Okabe? Is it fair? No. Might it happen? Yes. Well, that's why I asked you it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not fair at all. He does not deserve a fight with either one of those guys coming off a loss to Cowboy Cerrone. Having not won in the octagon since 2016 does not deserve it. Could still happen. Yeah, I mean, that's why I asked you if it was fair, because, it, you know, I wanted to know your honest opinion on that. You and I both know it's not, I, well, now I know your opinion. Mine is that it's not fair, but we both know that will print money and probably happen anyway. Yeah, we'll have to see, but hopefully, come on, please, this fight finally happens, and we all get to see it. That's all I ask. If somebody in the audience wants to make some type of fighter protection device, some type of hamster wheel that's full of bubble wrap or packing peanuts or something, I'm sure the UFC will be interested in purchasing them because they want these two in the cage. So do I. It's it, Honestly, I think part of the reason I'm so low on McGregor and Cowboy is I'm so high on that fight that I, I'm looking past this fight because of where I, I want to be, right? Oh, it's going to be amazing if it actually happens this time. Don't say and no. And remember, I was, I, you know, I was supposed to call the last one and April Fool's Day... You know, it was just surreal for everyone involved as this fight fell apart again. Yeah, um, I, you know what's so funny? I, I remember where I was when I, I was sitting at a red light in an intersection, and I looked down at my phone, and it came up, and I said, well, that's strange. How does an April Fool's joke get on MMA Junkie? And then it literally didn't register for like another hour, like, it really happened. But. Yeah, I called Joe Rogan, he goes, it's a joke got to be a joke you know as i called him i was like dude what's going on he's like it's a joke got to be a joke and i was like have you heard anything he's like, i haven't heard anything and then like a few minutes later he's like dude dana just called me yeah it's it's real and i was like oh it was that was the worst i don't remember <laughs> if we called or text but we, we 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 that was the info it's got to be a joke and then he's like nope just confirmed it it's not a joke it's real i was like fuck it's kind of just one of those things where you just you look away for a minute and you're like, man, this is why we can't have nice things. Yeah, exactly. With that said, we appreciate you guys checking this out. You should know we're going to be back. Even though, listen, if Jimmy is going to do six straight hours and they come on and talk to me for 20 minutes for you guys, you better believe he's going to be covering content all over the MFA global sphere this week. And we will be back to bring it to you. Appreciate you checking this out. We will be back very shortly with more commentary.